Hey guys, this is Austin. So the new Intel Haswell Core i3s have just hit, and so I figured this would be a great time to do a comparison between it and the new Core i5 to see which is best for your gaming dollar. To start, we have the Intel Core i3-4130. This is a dual core Haswell part with hyperthreading, and it's got a base clock speed of 3.4 GHz for $130. Jump up to the Core i5-4670K and you'll get a quad-core CPU, again based on Haswell, but with a clock speed they can boost up to 3.8 GHz stock with the option to overclock if you want to push it higher. For a solid mid-range card, we've got the 2GB EVGA GTX 650Ti Boost, which is a card I really like for the price, the 3GB MSI Radeon 7950, which gives plenty of performance for typical 1080p gaming, and finally, the beastly 3GB EVGA GTX 780, which is one of the fastest single GPU cards you can buy right now. Before we get into the gaming benchmarks, I ran each CPU through Cinebench. Since they're both based on the same architecture, the Core i5 narrowly wins when using a single core thanks to the higher boost clocks, but when you take all of the cores into account, hyperthreading helps some, but the Core i3 still falls behind. So on paper, the i5 clearly has the advantage, but how does it stack up when you're actually gaming? Starting with the 650Ti boost, we have the Firestrike benchmark inside 3 Mark, and unsurprisingly, there's not much of a difference here considering the $100 price premium. Battlefield 3 shows even less of a difference, of only about 2 frames per second. Crisis 3 is one of the most demanding games out, but it's almost entirely GPU bound here, as this is essentially a tie. Bioshock Infinite is basically the same story. With the 650Ti boost, both CPUs are simply good enough. Metro Last Light finally shows the Core i5 pulling ahead by about 10%, which makes sense as it's the most CPU bound game I test with. Unsurprisingly, at this price point, there really just isn't much difference between the Core i3 and i5. Now sure, it is a little bit faster, but for the most part, considering that $100 price premium, it's really not going to be worth it. However, what happens when we throw some extra GPU horsepower at it? Now with a Radeon 7950 on the test bench, we're back in Firestrike, and we start to see the Core i5 pull out a bit of a lead here. Jumping back into Battlefield 3, we're looking at mostly the same story though, with a pretty minimal difference. Crisis 3 is back to being within the margin of error for a tie however. Bioshock Infinite is helped along a bit by the quad Core i5, but even here we're only looking at about a 5% improvement. Even with the more beefy GPU, in Metro Last Light we're still only looking at a fairly small difference in performance. Even with a fairly powerful graphics card, the Haswell Core i3 really does put in a good showing. However, now let's go for some serious overkill. With the GTX 780 and Firestrike, we're finally seeing some substantial gains in performance of over 10%. Battlefield 3 is also starting to see a small boost, although both CPUs have no problems keeping the FPS well over 60. Crisis 3 continues to be extremely GPU bound though, even with a $650 GTX 780. Bioshock Infinite is just like Battlefield. We do see an improvement, but since the graphics are already maxed out, the difference between 90 and 100 frames per second is mostly academic. Finally, with Metro Last Light, we see the biggest improvement yet, with nearly 20 more frames per second with the Core i5 compared to the Core i3. The best way to sum up this video is that you shouldn't underestimate the new Core i3. Sure, it might only be a dual core part, however that hyperthreading definitely does do a lot to improve the performance in games, bringing it very close to the much more expensive Core i5. So if you're building a gaming PC with anything less than a Crossfire SLI setup, I would say that the Core i3 is absolutely worth a look. However, what do you guys think? Would you use a Core i3 in your next build? Would you maybe get something a little bit more beefy like a Core i5? Definitely be sure to let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments below. Anyway, if you enjoyed, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can become one of the guys and always be kept up to date with the latest and greatest. Anyway guys, thanks for watching.